Okay, um, hi everyone. I'm here with um, uh, actually, um, actually, I totally forgot how to pronounce your name. Um, uh, it's Sojania Timalsena. I'm, I'm, I'm say it again. Sojania Timalsena. Okay, so um, so Sojania. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Yes. So 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 I'm here with Sojania and um, and I'm and I'm Joseph Dewey and we're here talking about cluttering and. Um, I'm really, um, I'm really excited because um, so, so Janya is really, um, uh, really active on the online forums and on, um, and 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 is in the process of learning everything that he can about um, cluttering. And so it's just uh, um, really, really cool to uh, um, to talk. We we actually haven't talked before today in in video, but uh, um, but we've we, we've uh, what's that called when you oh, uh, like like Facebook Messenger um, yeah, chatted. We have texted. So. Um, so so, so it's good. Uh, it's good to finally um, talk to you today. And and I think um, starting out, could you um, could you talk about um, could you talk about your experience with cluttering and and how like how you how you heard about it, and then also um, and also with your speech, um, like like how uh, like like when did when when did you first become bothered about your speech, and then um, and then. Um, and, and then, like, like, what's um, how you would describe that? Um, so, so anyway, that's kind of a general question, but yeah. hopefully enough. So yeah, Joseph. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, and yeah, I'm very much uh, grateful for you to uh, start the you know, discussion about cluttering. And so, to begin with my um, myself, uh, I think I started uh, to be bothered about my speech when I when I was in when I was maybe aged 16, 17. And my cluttering is not uh, really a cluttering. Like it, it has not been with me uh, since my childhood because my parents uh, they said me like, oh, you used to speak very normally when you were, uh, you know, children. When you were a child, you had a very normal speech. If, like you used to speak very fluently. There was not any disfluency. And I feel like um, I started to speak fast when I was in grade nine. So maybe I was like 14, 15 years old. And like. Uh, sometimes people will pass the comment like, oh, you speak very fast, you know, like I was like, like, it was not a big thing for me then because like, oh yeah, it was very, uh, it was not frequent, you know, like people passing me the comment that I speak fast. It was kind of like rare phenomena. Like when I uh, went to buy something in the grocery store, like the person will say, oh, uh, you know, like, can you repeat? Or maybe like the person will say, you speak very fast. So yeah, it was very, very rare to hear that from somebody. And as I uh, keep on going, like get, getting older and older, my rate of speech became very fast. And it only became a problem, like as in a speech impediment problem when I, when I started my high school. So maybe in my sophomore year, I was not so much uh, like bothered by my speech, but in my, you know, like uh, in my final year of high school, it started to be a problem. And I started to really uh, like search about my problem, like oh, what is this condition, like what why it happens, and all those things. And then I stumbled upon the Facebook group of cluttering. Like I don't know how I reached there. Maybe it's like I found up out about the cluttering from from internet, and I just found out the Facebook group. And then I uh, started to meet people like me, you know, like not like me. Maybe we are all different. Like we have different kind of disturbances like symptoms like of cluttering. So yeah, so then I, from then I began my journey of, you know, trying to understand it more deeply and trying to implement the findings. And of course, like cluttering is very new phenomena, even in the speech language pathologists, uh, it's not really research, you know, I only have found about like four or five books on cluttering, you know. So it's a new phenomena as well in the uh, speech therapy, you know, uh, field. So. I have been trying my best to find, and you have been a big help for me to, you know, like know about cluttering. And people on the cluttering group, they are, they have been very helpful as well. Like I, I have few people who I have talked with, and yeah, I have been motivated from them. Like I had one, uh, I had met a person in the group, Facebook group. Like she used to have cluttering when she was uh, ten years old, and she started to uh, do therapy and now she is on the verge of becoming a speech language pathologist as well so yeah she was uh, that that was a very motivating story for me to begin you know like to like start to change myself you know to try to be normal to adjust my speech so yeah that's my journey so far um, 
that's really cool. And and I have a couple I have a couple questions. One is uh, one is do you, do you remember how do you remember how you found out about the term cluttering? Um, do you remember how you found out that cluttering was actually like something? So yeah, I think uh, Yovan, you know, like she was the one who's like who said me, or oh, maybe you have cluttering, you know, like and then she talked with me like for some while in Messenger, like uh, start to record herself and take pauses, you know, like she was the one who like gave me some suggestion on the first, maybe she was the one who really made me aware like cluttering, maybe like what I have, like this condition is cluttering. Okay. Yeah, maybe like and then, um, and then before you um before you heard about cluttering, how how were you describing um how you how were you describing your speech? Oh uh, like I, I just say like I just speak fast, you know, because I think fast, so I speak fast and that's my, you know, that's my personality. It's not Nothing about you know speech uh, impediment or something. It's just my personality because I'm very high energy person. So you know I just like do everything fast. Like you know everything I do is fast. You know like writing and you know, walking, everything, eating as well. So yeah, maybe it's about my personality. So I just thought it is about my personality, which it is to some extent. So cool. cool. And, and and you're in you're in speech therapy now, right? Yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, I, I just and, started my therapy like very recently. So. Okay, and then what? Um, what was what was it that, what was it that made you decide to go to speech therapy? Yeah, because I uh, talked with many people in the group, on the first group, and many of them they had uh, they went to speech therapy, and like many of them had substantial improvement of the speech. And like I, I was just curious to uh, to really uh, you know like find out what kind of things they do, uh, like for people with cluttering. You know, I'll just like first thing is curiosity, and the second thing is improvement. Like trying to improve, maybe I'll find some way. I'll find some technique. You know, like so. Yeah, those are my main two, you know, motivations. Okay, um, and and I think that's um, I think that's really cool and 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 kind of unique because most uh, because most people follow kind of the opposite path. Um, most people like their mom or their boss or their or, or like like in my. Um, in, in my case, the, um, the, dean, um, um, the, the dean of my college at university um, came to me and said, hey, you need to, you need to go and see a speech therapist. And then, uh, and then I go thinking, okay, well, um, I, I don't know what my dean was talking about. My speech is fine. And um, so, so, so that's, that, uh, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the typical story that, that like someone yeah, yeah, yeah. gets dragged into speech therapy. And then, um, and then I spend my whole time thinking, ah, is... Is this even really beneficial or not? Because I, I don't know if there's anything wrong with my speech. So, um, so that's the typical story. And so it's really, really cool to hear a story like you yeah. where, um, where, where, where you read about cluttering, say, oh, well, um, this, this kind of describes me. And, um, and, then you, and, and then you say, hey, well, um, I've, um, I've talked to a lot of people. They had success with speech therapy. So I want to go see a speech therapist. So, 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 it, so in a way, it's kind of like backwards from how most people mm, find yeah. or most people do speech therapy. But um, but but it's also really really cool um, too. So um, so um, so so one so one question and 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 I think it's interesting because uh, before we were before we were recording and uh, before we were recording and uh, you and I were just talking, then then you did uh, you did like three or four things that um, only people with cluttering do, like like nobody else yeah, yeah, yeah. with cluttering do. Um, and 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 now that we're uh, now that we're actually doing the recording, um, all of those um, all of those super cluttering things are um, kind of go away, which uh, yeah, which, gone. Also, uh, which is also part of uh, which is also part of the um, uh, which is also uh, which is also very indicative of cluttering that okay. when we're actually speaking, then our speech or when we're actually speaking, and we know that um, we know that we're being monitored. Then our speech um, becomes almost perfect, and then, um, and then, uh, and then we're, when we're speaking like more natural speech, and and um, one of the things one of the things that Yvonne said, because um, I'm doing that series with her, is she said um, like if I if I were doing the thing that Yvonne does, but 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 I I'd never like actually record anyone without without it, but I'd I'd have it like a um, like a cell phone taped to the wall, um, re recording recording yeah. the first. Uh, re recording the first like 15 minutes when we were just talking natural and our and our speech was much much less um, or, or, or much much better examples of cluttering than mm. um, than, um, than now. But 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 anyway, hopefully 
um, hope, hopefully we both relax and then later in the video, then we have like a couple like actual examples of, of, yeah, yeah. Cluttered, of cluttered speech because, um, because right now your speech is pretty much um, perfect. But, um, but, uh, but, but anyway, that, that's a super long introduction to my next question, which is if, if somebody didn't know anything about cluttering, um, what, what, what could they, what, what could they listen for in your speech so that they would know, oh, oh okay, this is, um, this is an example of, of cluttering. So like to begin with, you know, like the question of cluttering. So many people in the world don't know about cluttering. So even people with cluttering, they don't like, they have no clue of what cluttering is. So it's very hard to like, let's say, make people aware of what, like to make them aware of the sample of cluttering. So I think, uh, the first thing is very rapid and jerky speech. And the second thing is, uh, you know, like way use of uh, too much of interjections because uh, like I struggle with this too very much. You know, my my uh, my speech uh, sample, which I have uh, heard, which was like recorded very spontaneously uh, in both, uh, like in many of those samples, I can see like I have so many interjections, you know, like on um, like, uh, you know, things like this and mm -hmm. My speech rate is very fast, so it's like uh, if I show that speech to any other people, uh, they'll not say that it's cluttering. They'll just say, "Oh, this person speaks fast, and uh, maybe you just a bit more interjections than we do in our in our normal speech." So yeah, uh, the first thing is uh, they, they may notice, you know, like fast speech rate without any pauses in between. So it's like uh, while you're typing, you know, your name is like. There's no any space, so maybe they'll see that in the speech, and also like they'll see many interjections, and also maybe they'll see like revisions. You know, like if you also have had a video of this, you know, like how to identify cluttering, like revision and re like reviewing and all this thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the first thing will be fast speech rate, and the second thing will be use of uh, you know interjections. Maybe yeah. Okay. And also, like, yeah. uh, there's some, you know, fluency, uh, you know, like, this fluency is like a person with stuttering, you know, like, maybe uh, in the beginning, we'll just uh, have that. It's like, you'll feel like some kind of uh, frustration in the speaker, like, maybe, uh, you know, like, like, even though for a while, you'll just see that uh, frustration, like, hesitation. Okay, and, and another question I had is, what's the... Um, um, you, um, you, you mentioned earlier that, um, that you're, um, you're, um, you're maybe not, um, you, you maybe don't fit the mold of, of, of cluttering hundred percent. So, um, so what's, um, what, um, what are, um, what are some things, um, um, you mentioned the things that you do, um, what are, what are some things that you don't do that, um, uh, that. So yeah, like the first thing is I don't have the problem with mazing, you know, like I don't struggle, like I, I don't go to the like very forward to the conversation and come back again. It's like I know what I have to say, you know, I, I, like I know what I uh, like in my lexicon, I can find a word properly. And yeah, th 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 that's the main thing, you know, uh, so like even my therapist, like she was saying, I, I have a person like who has a very severe cluttering. He can't even say like properly. He cannot organize his thought about uh, the process of going to office. So he can like, you know, say it properly. It's like extreme level of, you know, like uh, maybe amazing, maybe like uh, organization problem. So mm -hmm. I don't have it personally. And the next thing is like, as I saw the video of uh, Yovan in the, uh, you know, like today this morning about cluttering in children. I don't have any problem with handwriting because uh, it's not really that, you know, I can understand it. Like she was saying, like her daughter, you know, when she, when she was hundred years old, like she came home and like she was crying because like she could understand her handwriting she wrote before like a week ago. So like I can read my handwriting very well. It's not really that you know, it's not incomprehensible. And yeah, like I think like these are the two main things which SLP you should diagnose somebody with cluttering. So it's not really. Uh, I don't have this personally, so maybe, and also I have uh, some words pro like which I cannot really pronounce well. So it is more kind of stuttering, cluttering, you know, spectrum, not not purely cluttering spectrum. So yeah. Okay, and um, and that's um, and that's really cool, and that's um, so so I I kind of want to talk about this too. Is that I think uh, I think it's really important that um, and. 
Um, and then, especially with um, especially with cluttering, that um, that that, that you're, um, you're you're basically self-diagnosed, and then I and then I was diagnosed by a therapist. But um, but I think it's really important that people can um, can self um, can self-diagnose, and and I think um, I think that probably if I went to um, probably if I went to a hundred speech therapists, then I then I guarantee you um, that a hundred of them wouldn't diagnose me with cluttering. And one of my uh, one of my worries is that as I get better and better and better with my speech, then maybe um, maybe um, maybe um, uh, maybe that number that would diagnose me with cluttering would uh, would, uh, would go um, uh, would, would go down to almost zero. So so uh, so so anyway, uh, one of my one of my worries is well, if I if I get so good with my speech, then like a lot of the underlying problems are still there, but then nobody can help me because they they're mm -hmm. like oh well no Joseph your your speech is fine like like even um, even speech even speech therapist so 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 one of the things is I um, I think it's really um, I think it's really important that people can um, self um, self diagnose and, and and I think that like even if um, even if somebody like self diagnosis is wrong um, the stuff uh, the stuff about cluttering like like a lot of the stuff that has worked with me has been like just good public speaking principles and and I think I've mentioned this a couple of times that that one of the things that really helped was was me being in a play um so so, so I was in a really short play I, I only had like 10 lines but um but that really really helped me with my um with my speech because um, with um, with those 10 lines I I had to practice practice I I had to memorize them and then I spent so much time working on like the inflection and me saying it exactly right and um, and then especially because I have cluttering I uh, my, uh, I knew my natural tendency would be that the first time to deliver it well and slowly and like at the right pace and then and then the and then by by um, by play number twenty for me just to um, say my line so fast that um, um, so um, so um, so so anyway it was kind of like like when I was doing this play it was just this huge struggle to say okay Joseph you practice this this is how, um, this is how you do it it's this inflection it's this inflection it's this it's this speed it's this pacing but then everything inside of me saying okay I know this I'm just gonna like say it as, as rapidly yeah. as I possibly. Um, can so um, so 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 anyway um, my my point with all that is that all of the stuff um, all the stuff that will help people with cluttering will also help um, anyone else so so even if um, even if there was somebody that says hey well I'm 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 a clutterer and um, and then um, and then they're actually not then going through all the um, going through all the therapies and um, and learning everything about um, speech and organiz organization. There's absolutely no harm harm in that. Um, um, but um, but I also have to say I'm, I'm not a speech therapist, so so I can't I can't diagnose anyone with um, with cluttering. I could, um, all I can say is that I really I really support the um, I really support that people should be able to self diagnose with um, with cluttering. And, and if you think if you think, if you think about stuttering, if somebody says, oh oh yeah, I've um, I stutter. Um, nobody is going to say, um, did you get diagnosed by a therapist? Are you sure you stutter? Like, like nobody's yeah. actually going to say yeah. that. And, and the whole reason is that, uh, well, there's, um, uh, actually, it's not, a, it's not a short reason. It's like, you know, like uh, a person with, uh, you know, stuttering, like the next person who is listening, they can say, oh, he has, you know, he's stuttering. But a person with stuttering, like, and, uh, you know, the person who is listening can say, oh, he has, like, you know, speech impediment, he has cluttering, you know, so that's different, you know, in, in these two cases. So. <clears throat> cool. So, so how, how do you know, how do you know that you don't just speak fast? So, because I have, like, uh, I started to record myself, and also, like, while doing pre presentations, like, I asked my friend to record myself, so, uh, like in many times when the recording is random, then I can like really find myself struggling to find words, you know, like the hesitation. I can find I'm not taking breath properly. I can, you know, like see everything that is associated with this, this fluency, you know, like mm -hmm. lack of breathing in between and lack of pauses and just speaking jerkily, you know, like speaking randomly and like when you're speaking smoothly and then you start to speak like very extremely fast. And then, you know, I can see like a while, 
speaking like it's like when i'm speaking very fast i can see the person who is listening to me like struggle like like getting confused you know like uh, getting anxious like oh my gosh you know what is this person trying to say me like even in the last video that you even did like she was saying if you are a person you know who speaks very fast then the listener will be a bit like anxious when you are trying to give so much of information so yeah i can see that so yeah because of that i can say like i don't speak normally i have mm-hmm. disfluencies so like i have started to analyze myself you know like self analyze myself and like and also like uh, start to monitor myself um, daily like when i'm speaking even though if i am struggling like I, i just become uh, self conscious and i can say at that time that oh my gosh like i have th- like so many of these things which i which i can like i could not really um, you know understand like only after i started like only after i i started to you know, you know like sorts about cluttering like sorts about speech production like everything like about speech you know like i started to really notice about my experiences so that's why i can say i have so many experiences associated with you know cluttering and some with stuttering Cool. And, and I saw this. Um, I saw this video. I think it was. Um, I think it was something like the um, the world's um, the world's fastest man. Um, and, um, and 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 he um, he's um, he's the guy that speaks the fastest in in the Guinness Book mm-hmm. of World Records. Yeah, I have seen it. And, uh, and 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 it was on it was on like David Letterman or something. And uh, and so so he um, he read um, he read this thing really really fast like like four hundred four hundred or six hundred mm-hmm. words a minute or. or 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 whatever it was just just very very fast and um and then and, and then the host uh, the host of the hawk show said oh well are, are you just like um are you, are you just like stringing all the words together are you um, um basically basically he asked that he asked the person are, are are you cluttering when you're saying when you're saying it that, that fast and he said no 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 actually um actually in order to get into the Guinness book of world records what um, what they do is is you say it um and then um, and then they slow and, and then they slow oh. it down and 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 he said for um, for me you can tell um, I'm I'm actually hitting every single one of the sounds, mm. um, and so and so I thought um, I thought that video was really really interesting as far as as cluttering uh, because um, because he's um, he's able to he's able to speak very very fast without disfluency because he's able to hit like every single thing um, his hit rates like a hundred percent where uh, where where my hit rate is much 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 yeah. So you know, like it's like a person with cluttering, like they often get the like they often like get you know like somebody says to them, uh, "Oh, you speak so fast, you should be a rapper." You know, it's like, oh man, like you know, <laughs> so it's like they're trying to you know like give us compliment, more, like compliment, but it's not really true because like the ra- like the rapper like it, they speak fast, but they have like they have like they don't have any disfluency. But mm-hmm. we like we speak fast, but also we have disfluency. You know, like you give the example of the person with who speaks fast. So if you you know like uh, uh, decrease the uh, speed rate of the clip, then you can hear the person properly. And if you you know uh, decrease the rate of our speech while listening, then you'll hear the dis- disfluency. So it's not really you know like uh, same thing. You know, it's very different thing. So yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's that's a good that that's a good point. So um, so so this is um, this is uh, this is a question. Do you um, you mentioned that you're fast with everything? You um, mm, yeah yeah. Fast, you walk fast. You eat fast. You uh, you mentioned like three or four other fast things yeah. that you do. I like fast. Has has the advice to slow down helped you at all with speech or? um or uh, um cuz cuz like one of the things one of the things that i want uh, one of the things that would be cool for me is if i could speak as fast as i want to but without um uh, but but mm-hmm. very very clearly um i i i now um i now understand that um i now understand that it's like like with some people um especially like the like like older people that just speak very very slowly because mm-hmm. um, i come from a small farming town where uh, where like a lot of um, a lot of the people there just speak very very slowly mm-hmm. so um, so one of the things that i try to do is 
is more like match my speed to the to my listener speed like like, like figure out okay this um, this person speaks really really fast so they can probably understand me speaking very very fast but this person speaks mm. very very slowly so i have to speak very very slowly um so so anyway um um yeah, like, so yeah like uh you know, like in my college, I have a professor who is very old, he's, he's like 75 something. And like, like every time I give presentation, you know, like I speak very fast for him, you know, but even like uh, while giving presentation in other subjects, like, you know, where the teacher is uh, co comparatively very young, you know, like 45, 40, uh, it's not that like, while I'm speaking in that class, in that, uh, you know, like while I'm giving presentation in that subject, I just try to be very slow because I know like this person is a bit, you know, old and maybe, you know, <laughs> You might not really you know catch what I'm saying. So yeah, I try to be a bit yeah like I try to speak according to, to the context, you know, because like as a as a listener, you are very you know like lazy. Even like even though if uh, it's like, let's say somebody comes to me and speaks very fastly, then I'll be like uh, you know because like I'll be um, my mind will be somewhere else and it will try to come to the to the present moment and yeah it will be hard for me as well. So I try to be you know like I try to speak. In the context and like uh while i'm speaking with my friends then i just try to be normal because like like they have been habituated to speaking you know to uh, like hearing me speak fast and like i don't get like huh and uh you know i don't get what did you say from my friends like it's very very rare with, with my friends but it's like uh when i'm talking with a new person then i try to be very very slow you know like at least try to be slow and the question like uh how like uh, has you know uh, trying to speak slow helped you? It's like uh, I'm trying to not really you know speak slowly. I'm just trying to uh, take breaths and try to take pauses. It's like when I finish the sentence, it's like my name is Sojane and like there's a full stop, so I'll try to pause and try to you know I live in Kathmandu and pause. Just trying to use that technique, you know, not try uh, not trying to speak slowly, but just you know like because we have been habituated to speak so fastly, like uh, you know. We don't even breathe properly. It's like uh, when we speak fast, when we speak uh, naturally without any conscious effort, we just speak like very, very fastly, and we forget to take breaths. And yeah, so I'm just trying to use these two techniques, and it has helped me a lot. You know, trying to take a breath after you speak a few words, and and you know, like try to maintain the sentence boundary because I'm like my therapist is also fo focusing on this. You know, trying to maintain the sentence sentence boundary and and trying to take this yeah it doesn't mean like this like these two things has really helped me to you know decrease my discrepancy that's um that's really um uh, that's really cool and i um i haven't really i, I haven't really ever thought of it that way before um but that's um, well, well, like even um, even though I um, even though I know because like um, even though I know you're supposed to take a breath with every sentence and and they taught me that in grade school, um, like like if you're reading and it's and it has a period, then you take a breath. But but before today, it hadn't like occurred to me that you should like try to put that into your speech. I, um, I um, so so that would be an interesting thing for me to. Uh, so it's like you know uh don't really focus on staying slowly just focus on uh taking breaths and pausing then the you know your speech will slow down itself you know like naturally even you know like like without putting any effort on speak like without putting any effort on reducing your uh you know speech rate you'll just do it uh what do you call uh you'll do it as a consequence of trying to take breaths and pauses because breathing is very normal you know like also, you feel good, you know. Even though if you're anxious, if you just take a breath, you just feel very, uh, very, very relaxed, and it also helps you speak very not like very slowly. Because while you are, let's say, going to interview, and you feel very anxious, and you just try to speak fastly, then just try to take breaths, you know, like few breaths. It helps you to like relax as well, and also and in, in, like decreases your speech rate. So that's really a, a great byproduct of you know. If you breathe, you'll be relaxed and that will help you speak. And if you're relaxed and your speech rate will be very, not fast, so it's really helpful for me. 
Cool. That um, that is um, that is really cool. And um, and that and that's like like as I'm thinking as I'm thinking like through like the next um, some of the next things that I'm going to try to improve my speech. Then uh, th then that uh, that 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 technique um, fits in really really well. Um, mm -hmm. One um, one. One, one question, and, and you already kind of answered this a little bit, um, but uh, but but since you're in speech therapy, what um, in uh, in addition to what you already mentioned, what has been beneficial for you um, going to speech therapy? Yeah, the first thing I have uh, like really benefited is uh, I have become you know aware of how I speak because uh, through her feedback and like through uh, some random people she brings in the session, you know. <laughs> I have really uh, learned about myself, you know, because like uh, people before they used to say, okay, you speak fast, but not really like they used like they didn't say like how fast or like how I spoke, but now I, I know how fast I, I speak and what kind of differences I have. And, you know, like, and I know like, uh, I know now that, okay, these are the things which I can improve. And if I improve this and as a byproduct, my speech will be much better. And that is the, first and major thing which I have really benefited from going to speech therapy. And the next thing is, you know, I have re really become a bit like my self-confidence is, it has a bit uh, increased because before I, like, I don't know, you know, what this is and, or maybe, uh, you know, because like before knowing about cluttering, I was like very, you know, like I used to have like self-pity, you know, like, oh my gosh, like I speak fast and I know, like nobody, you know, will employ me or maybe I, I cannot do well in life. And then when I started to really learn about it, I just really became aware, oh my God, it's, it's like, it's not a big thing. You can improve, you can change. And yeah, the same feeling has really uh, been increased, you know, like actually, like amplified after going to therapy. So yeah, these are main well, benefits. And then, um, and then what, um, what, what things do you think that your speech therapist did that, that helped to increase your confidence? Yeah, like see, you know, like obviously like with our, you know, speech, it's also about our mind, you know, like, because we feel like, oh my, like in the class, if I have to ask a question, then you'll feel like, oh, he'll just, uh, you know, I speak fast, so I'd rather not ask the question because, you know, he'll not understand, or maybe I have to say it for three, four times. So like, uh, she has really helped me to like go into the depth of this problem and, you know, try to face the fear. It's like kind of, you know, psychotherapy as well, because uh, it's a bit about more of, you know, like, uh, psychological counseling in in this aspect and you know space therapy so like she has you know like uh, through our report i have come to know like what are my fears you know like my main fear uh while i'm speaking because uh i really you know struggle with authority you know like speaking with authority figure so mm -hmm. i just uh, was trying to you know learn about uh, why i struggle with speaking with them or maybe why i fear so like she just made me aware of it and i have put effort into it and yeah I'm trying to do it now consciously even though it might be embarrassing for me I'll just do it anyway because you know like this is saying you know a brave man dies one and the coward dies a thousand times so I'm not trying to like uh, make it a more of a mind thing you know because we suffer more in imagination than in reality so I'm just trying to yeah it has helped me a lot in this aspect and and that's really cool it sounds like it sounds like you went into speech therapy um, kind of with a lot of ideas, like like I do this, I do this, I do this, and it sounds like your speech therapy or your speech therapist kind of op um, open open up your mind to, hey, well, um, let, um, let's think about this, let's think about this, let's think about this. So 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 it, so it seems like you kind of um, you kind of went in with like like this much um, mm -hmm. this much focus, and then and then your speech therapist really broadened broadened your focus mm -hmm. to um, to teach you about a whole bunch yeah, of yeah. different. Like, so it's very much you know like happy because I am like. She said, like, I, like, uh, we rarely find a client, you know, a person who has, like, who puts so much of effort into it, who research so much of things. So I'm really happy. And, like, see, you know, like, often says to me, you should read, you know, like, you should read to be an SLP, you know, you should read to be, you know, like, you should read something like, uh, you know, speech therapy, something like psycholinguistics, you know, neurology. So, yeah, I think it has helped her as well. That's, uh, and that's really, uh, that's really, really cool. Um, she, um, she sounds like a really cool speech therapist. Yes, he is. Um, oh, so 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 I uh, I have this uh, I have this activity. Um, so so this uh, this is more, uh, and, and I've never uh, I've never done this before. Besides uh, besides I think we went through like three or four um, three or four of the forty three 
um, things in um, like in our pre-discussion. But um, so, so, so I've never done this before, but this, um, this I think is a really interest, um, a really interesting activity um, to kind of, um, to kind of check yourself for cluttering. And, and then I think this also, um, this also can really help to, um, can, can really help with, um, do, um, do you have a, do you have a stuttering component or pure cluttering or, or stuttering and, um, and cluttering? So, um, so, so basically English, um, English has, uh, well, British English, which is what, uh, which is what I'm going to show you in, um, in a minute. And actually, I'll, let me, let me see if I can show that now. So, so British English has 43 sounds, um, at least, uh, um, at least according to this, um, this document from 1979. Um, so, so basically, um, basically, uh, basically, what the activity is is uh, this. This is a list of the 40, um, 43 sounds in British English, uh, which uh, uh, which is uh, I'm I'm American, but my mom is British. But I'm I'm going to read these with a British accent. Or sorry, I'm going to re read these with an American accent. Um, but um, but but most of the uh, most of the world besides America has um, that, that speak English like like Nepal and Thai people speak with um, basically a Brit uh, British English accent. So so what the activity is is um, pick pick the first two. Um, so so the first the first sound is the p sound, and and the and, and the first two words in this are pan and drip. So so basically uh, basically on each of the forty. Three sounds, then say the first two words, or or like like there there's some there's some obscure words if if you don't um, if you don't know if you don't know the one of the first two words, then go on to the third word, but just, but just two um, two on each of them, um, or or if we or, or if we had more time, then you could do like all all of them, and and what you're uh, what what you're kind of looking for is oh um, do I have a problem like do I have a problem with the p sound or can I say pen drip drop um, pen drip topper uh, without uh, without having like a a problem in in like actually producing the p sound uh, um, like like I, I said topper wrong initially, but I didn't actually have a problem like producing the p in topper. I just mm -hmm. like um, said topper too fast or whatever. Whatever I I wasn't really self monitoring at that time. Okay, so so I'll, um, so I'll do this first, um, and and then one uh, one other things with one of the other things with this is I think a I think like a pure cutter would go through and um, the first like like eight or ten of these would say pen drip bag cab tip mitten and then and then reach a point about halfway through where they just kind of get bored and say and start going much much faster cat um, cat key duck track mammoth lamb and 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 so so a pure cutter might mess up a little bit but um but but this uh, this isn't uh, this isn't like a uh, this isn't like a gotcha thing. It's not like to catch people. So, so typically, typically a, a pure clutter wouldn't actually make any mistakes at all with this, except for the later, the longer and longer they do it, then the more rapid their speech would get. And then, and then someone, um, someone with someone with stuttering would <laughs> probably, and and I think they, I think they have like the really hard sounds toward the, uh, like these are usually easy sounds for. Folks with stuttering, except for L, can be hard, and then R, R, and then especially the American R is really, really tough for people, uh, or, or, or for for a lot of uh, for a lot of people, and uh, yeah, and then and and then the vowels and then the vowel sounds afterwards. So so anyway, um, I'll um, I'll go I'll go through it um, I'll go through it and then um, give um, give my comments about like like my experience with this. And then, um, and then, and then you'll go through it and give your comments about your your experience with it. Okay. okay. Pen, drip, beg, cab, tip, mitten, dog, hidden, cat, he, duck, track, mouth, lamb, note, knob, lot, feel, red, very, fat, phone, vile. Save, sit, city, zoo, hazy, cat, hate, witch, whale, gate, log, cheese, chips. 
Question, suggestion, jam, gem, ring, rink, thigh, thistle, thy thistle, shop, station, vision, treasure, you, yacht. Oh no, now I lost. Okay, here it is. Do, few, ink, pit. Hated area, egg fed, apple bat, car, calm, fox, dog, cot, talk, cook, soot, moon, cool, up, hut, burn, wood, fern, learn, um, Menorca, China, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to skip Menorca, China, sofa, pallor, doctor, say, sail, oats, open, I, ice, mouse, out, oil, toy, here, peer, there, where, and that's the end. Okay, so, uh, so, um, so, so basically then my experience with this is, um, I think, I think like, um, I think like when, because um, uh, if I if I copied if I copied and pasted all this and then put it um, and then put it where where because um, some of these only have like this one only has two um, two words on here um, even though um, even though it has a, like a whole bunch of examples so so I think um, I think after one of these sections where there was only, where where there, where there were only two words and then there were a whole bunch then I uh, then I sped up a little bit egg bed apple bat car calm. Um, but, um, and, and, and because I'm doing this video then, um, uh, because I'm doing this video and I described, okay, this is how you're supposed to do it. Um, I'm trying, um, uh, and, and, and I guess subco subconsciously I'm trying to not be a typical, um, I'm trying to not be typical. And so, um, uh, so, so, so I think my, I think my speed was pretty good all, um, all through. All throughout, even though like some um, some parts were a little bit faster and some parts mm -hmm. were a little bit slower, um, but like um, oh, and the and, and 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 there was one point there was one point that I was that, um, that I stopped, and and the reason I stopped is that um, I thought it was just really weird that the uh, sound like like is in them and then. Like um, so, like so, so, so I, stopped, um, I stopped not because I couldn't pronounce stuff, but but I stopped right here because I was thinking, okay, why did they put thy and thistle? Um, thy and thistle, are like like, um, I don't even um, I don't even know if I have even heard thistle before. Like like I think it's in some like Christmas song or something. Um, but 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 anyway, uh, um, the reason I stopped on this um, wasn't um, wasn't because of difficult. Difficulty in pronunciation. It was because the um, because I was like like that um, that thought that I just said to you like went through my uh, went through my head. So um, so 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 the nice uh, the nice thing about the list like this is is in in doing it it's it's hard to it's hard to say okay um, this is the this is the Z sound zoo and hazy um, um, because um, but this list is cool because it's not just stuff that starts with the sound. So, so it's hard to it's hard to tell okay which uh, which uh, which sound which sound actually is um, which sound actually is is this is this happening on so so anyway that's uh, that, uh, that's my uh, that's my version of it and um, and so okay so so your um, your turn now and hopefully I can, <coughs> okay I can keep up. <coughs> so pain trip big cab deep midden dog hidden cat Key, dock track, mouth lamb, note knob, lot wheel. Next one. Red very fat phone, file save, sit city, Jew hazy, head who, which well, gate log cheese. Chips, patch, hutch. Oh. Question, suggestion, posture, nature, procedure, soldier, 
Thai Tishil Dai Father Sop Station Vision Fraser You Yellow Few Dew Each Fit Ink Stories Hated Reported Menace Menace Fountain Egg Spade Apple Pat Car Come Fox Wasp Caught Claw For Sore Moon Cool Dew Few Bird Girl Thirty-seven, I think. Okay. Minorca, China. So far. Doctor. Current. Center. Acre. Oats. Open. Ice. I. Mouse. Now. Oil. Toil. Hair. Weary. There. Rare. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So, so now, uh, now give your reaction and um, were, were anything uh, was anything hard with this, and then um, and then any um, any other things like related to um, related to clutter in your speech that you noticed when you were going through this. So, like, I did not struggle uh, while pronouncing anything, and also like I was not really uh, trying to speak fast when I might. <clears throat> I'm sorry. When I went down, you know, like I was uh, giving emphasis to all of the words uh, very equally. So I can say, if my, like for myself, like if I am cutter or restructor by this, because I struggle with some words, not because, you know, like I did not, like I could not pronounce the word, even though I have struggled, you know, with while pronoun well pronouncing ST, you know, like sa, sa and the sound in my conversation while reading it from a you know, text, it's not a problem because obviously uh, it's already there. Uh, you know, like the word is there, so it's not a big problem. So yeah, like personally, I know like in many, uh, like often I struggle uh, to pronounce S, H and, and S, T and T, S sound. And yeah, and also like uh, when uh, saying some multi-syllable word, you know, like like in the, I think that there was uh, reported or like hated. So I, I you know, and also like when saying, I think DZ or something, I just, uh, like hidden, I was just uh, trying to you know like um, omit the uh, like multisyllabic part of that hidden and you know like written. So yeah, I feel cool, again. Cool. So. And um, and then so so I think there's kind of two different um, two different levels to that. One is the level where you're um, where like in a really controlled environment, like um, like. Like this, that you have a problem. Um, the, um, the other is um, the other is that when it comes across in like in like um, in speech, then like compressing it or mm. or or going over. It. So 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 in this um, in this in this in this list, were there were there any sounds? Uh, were there any were there any sounds that you had a had a hard time with doing in a very controlled environment in in this very controlled, very slow environment? I think like no, like in this control environment, I just like I did not really struggle because I I could not feel the hesitation. I could not yeah, I could not feel the stress, you know, because in the real world you you feel that stress, you know, you feel that hesitation. But then I was like yeah, 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 yeah cool. And 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 I should uh, I should mention that that going through this going through this exercise won't actually help your speech, but yeah. uh, but, but going. Um, Going through this exercise will give you the confidence to say, "Hey, well, all all the forty all the forty three sounds in English, I can say, uh, like like I don't actually have a problem with any of the forty three sounds. It's just that when they're um, when w when I'm doing rapid fire, speaking very very speaking my comfortable rate, then um, then words like hidden that have a bunch of stuff get mm -hmm. um, yeah. go from it's like, um, you know, go from being very easy to say to um, to having some difficulty. So like, so, uh, you know, like, so, so, so um, like, yeah, please. Oh, so so anyway, um, the um, the um, 
the, the next thing that I'm doing with Yvonne on Monday, um, she, um, she, um, she's going to talk about she's going to talk about therapy and um, like, like therapy, and it's kind of it's going to be directed to um, to therapists, especially like through the di the diagnostic part. And one uh, one of her one of her big things. Uh, well, I, I, I should probably save it for the video, but but anyway, for um, if if she thought that I was encouraging people to read this as a way of as a way of um, getting better with their speech, mm -hmm. then uh, th um, then I think she'd be really really mad from uh, from, um, from what I've. Uh, uh, but 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 anyway, like, like like the cool thing about the cool thing about this is um, n not that you would do it every day, but if you do it once. If you do it once, then then you get confidence. Hey, I can I can say every single um, I can say every single sound. Or or if there are some sounds that you have trouble with, then then doing something like this really brings out. Okay, well, um, actually, I I knew I had I knew I had problem with this word, but I didn't know like what sound in that uh, what what the sound was that I that I had a problem with. So it's like you know like people with, like people who had this you know struck like they can really pronounce many words. So like. Uh, Sometimes you feel like, you know, maybe you can't really pronounce it at all. So maybe doing it will help you to really uh, recognize that. Well, I can, you know, like produce all of those sounds, you know. It's not like I have, like I had a stroke and I can pronounce this. So it helps a lot. Cool. So, so uh, this, um, when you said that, uh, when you described, or when you listed the three or four words, like, like hidden, um, one, one word, uh, and I noticed that, uh, 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 this is from like a long, long time ago, but words like probably um, mm. that had uh, words that had multiple L's or multiple R's or multiple R's and L's probably okay. regularly. Um, I, Can you pronounce Slatan? <clears throat> what's that? Slatan, Slatan, Slatan. Uh, uh, sorry, um, how, how do you spell it? Say it L A T A N, Slatan. So, sorry, say it again. Z L A T A N is a name, you know, it's a name of, of a very famous uh, Spanish person. He's a Swedish person, so it's very hard for me to pronounce. You know, Zlatan is like very, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, okay, and and I don't, um, I don't actually watch very many sports, so yeah, um, he's a footballer, so Zlatan. So it's very hard for me, you know, personally. Zlatan, Zlatan is. Like sla and ta and all this hard work for me in one word. <laughs> oh yeah, there's um, there's uh, there's a word. Uh, so so I, I I used to have a um, I used to have like kind of like a, this Scrabble like dictionary thing. It was called T E A, and what what you could do is you could put um, it had a it had all the words in English loaded in, and then you could put like patterns like like what words start and end with the same letter. Or what words have like what words have this followed by this, or what what words have two consonants where um, where uh, um, where like R S and whatever aren't aren't mm -hmm. the second one, and 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 that's where um, that's where I found the word tamesis, and um, so what is that tamesis? Yeah, tamesis, T M E S I S. Oh. Uh, and and, and what, uh, what that means, uh, well, it, it's actually used mostly in cursing. Um, so, so I'll say effing instead of like the actual F word. Yeah. But if you say um, this is absa effing delicious, mm. uh, that's um, that's tamesis where you like you, you have wow. a word and then you like interject something else in the middle. And, and, and maybe I like tamesis because like it's kind of cluttering, but kind of um, kind of not. But um, <laughs> But 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 anyway, it took it took me a while to figure out how to say tamesis because um, it's not like a actual like regular. Yeah. Also, like you know, like in Nepali, like there are many words, like very multisyllabic words, and also they have so many things together. You know, like p, r, and yeah, it's hard. Like I have so many words. You know, like I have a list of words, which is very, which is very hard for me personally. So yeah, for me as well, like p, r, and s, h. Like you know, when you say. Turtle, you know, like I just struggle by saying turtle. It's like the, the spelling is S U B T L E, but you say turtle, you know, so it's like very hard for me as well. And also like T S sound, you know, T H, like theta, like yeah, like personally for me, like these four sounds are a bit difficult, you know, while speaking, while conversing, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and 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 I can't remember. Uh, I um. 
So, oh, 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 so, so, so with, uh, with those words, uh, with those words that I had a, I had a problem with, I took, um, I, I use this, I use this TEA software and I found all the, I found all the words that were like that, all the words that had uh, multiple R's and multiple L's, um, like, like probably and regularly. And, and then I just practiced and practiced and practiced them. And then, uh, and then I, uh, and then I got up and then I got over, uh, uh, I, I don't know. Well, now I don't really say probably or regularly in speech very much, but, um, hmm. So, so I can't tell. I can't tell if I stopped using them because I um, have have just bad memories with them, or or. So do you also like struggle, you know, while pronouncing multisyllabic words? Like for me, like syllables, when like when a word has four or five syllables, then it's like kind of nightmare for me. You know, it's like I would say like you know, uh, mass, as two sets, you know, I can say mass two sets, you know, it's very hard for me. It's like I I'll condense the words. It's like very obvious, you know. Also while saying. Representative, you know, I'll more often than not condense this, you know, five, six syllables. And do we also struggle with this still? Um, and, and, and that's a, uh, that's a good question. Um, that's, uh, that's something like, because um, Yvonne said there, there are two, two types of, um, two types of folks with cluttering, syn, um, syn, syntactical and yeah, phonological. And, 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 I can't, and, and one of them, I can't remember what's what, but 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 with me, um, 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 basically basically like the brief summary is the is, is the one that's not me um, has has a real time real a, a real hard time like compressing words and then also um, and then also uh, also also even like compressing se compressing sentences mm. and then and, and then the one that uh, the one that is me ha um, struggles with all the other parts of. Of cluttering, so so I think I think that like especially in my um, especially in my like YouTube video speech, then um, then then I don't have any problem, or or you, you, it's probably hard to like tell me compressing words, but like like in in um, in in non um, in in non controlled speech or where I'm where I stop thinking about it, then then like um, so 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 I so I certainly remember. Um, compressing um, compressing words before, and I think that I, I think that that's what the problem was with regularly and probably is that I just compressed them and left off um, left off some of the some of the sounds. Not not that I couldn't pronounce R's, L's, P's, and whatever, but um, mm. but um, but just something about those words like um, that I that I compressed them. Like you know, like let me ask you now because like you have been asking me so <laughs> so okay. like you know. Uh, it's like uh, you were diagnosed with it like very very early, you know. Like maybe like in that time, uh, this word even was not really famous among the therapists. So, um, so uh, what was your experience with you know speech language pathologists then? And uh, if you are taking it now, like maybe you have gone to some sessions still now, like sometimes. Like uh, what kind of difference do you find you know back then and now? And what are the most efficient techniques that you have really? Come across, or you have, uh, you know, used in your speech. So, um, so, so actually, when I, um, when I went to when when I went to speech therapy, I kind of got the and, and I was diagnosed. I kind of got the I kind of got the feeling that they'd never seen a or that um, they'd never actually had someone with buttering. Um And and I think they might have um, they might have told me that like, hey, you're our first person with. Um, you're you're our first person with cluttering, and so um, and so we're just going to try uh, we're we're just going to try some stuff, and we think um, we're we're pretty sure because we contacted some experts, and and this is this is our diagnosis. So um, so so I think the um, I think the thing that's the same is that um, is the speech um, speech therapist even well I've got a um, I've got a friend I've got a friend in Thailand and he's. Um, he's a speech, he's a speech therapist, and he said that um, I think he said that he had a job where for um, where for like a year he was just teaching people how to swallow because they, they have speech mm, yeah. uh, uh, speech therapists have like so many different um, so many different like types of mm. of clients, and so 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 for a whole year, I'll, um, like like eighty percent of his job was teaching. Yeah. swallowing which which that uh, that that doesn't actually help someone with uh, that doesn't actually help someone with cluttering but 
but one of the things that I've noticed about like all the um, all the speech therapists that uh, um, uh, the, uh, the speech therapist that I went to when I got therapy and then uh, uh, now now I'm totally fascinated. Like whenever somebody says, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, my my job is speech therapy," I was like, "Wait, wait, wait! I, I want to talk to you, and I want to talk to you a lot." And, mm -hmm. and this is totally fascinating. And then I'll ask them a bunch of questions and try and get free therapy from them. And <laughs> um, so, um, so, so, so anyway, whenever, um, whenever I, whenever I meet, um, whenever I meet anyone that's a speech therapist, I always like to uh, just I think um, I think speech therapists are fascinating. And so. So, so the cool thing, uh, the cool thing about speech therapists is they're 100 percent, they're 100 percent focused on, on I, um, I want, I want to help you, and I want to help you to improve your, uh, your speech, and so, um, and, and they've learned like a whole bunch of different techniques, uh, like, uh, like, like, and, and, and I, and I feel like I can learn from, from everything and everyone and everything. Uh, like like something from that and and like probably even my friend that uh, my friend that uh, my friend that worked with uh, worked with people that had um and, and i'm not I'm, I'm not sure what kind of condition like 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 maybe after your stroke or after you have a stroke or something that um that you need to like learn how to swallow or whatever uh, that, that, that's related to speech therapy but um But anyway, I, I, I'm sure that uh, so 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 my point about that is if if I talked to my friend and and said hey I will explain explain to me about uh, ex explain to me about swallowing and and, mm -hmm. and what techniques do you use and why and why do you do it and why uh, why do you have to teach people swallowing and I, and I asked all those questions and and he uh, he he broke it down for me and 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 he did like before and after. I'm sure that something about that, I'd be like, oh, okay, I I, I could use that with my speech. I could, uh, right. and right now, right now, I don't have like I never think about swallowing. I never, like, um, mm -hmm. but but I'm sure there's something in that about swallowing, and 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 that's just one thing that's like super obscure and super super whatever. So 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 anyway, anyway, my my point is even even a speech therapist that has never heard about cluttering and has never treated a clutter before. Um, uh, um, even even a speech therapist like that is going to be a great coach. And and yeah. I, I've never met I've never met a mean speech therapist. Like all the um, all the speech therapists that I um, well um, I've met a lot of really really smart speech therapists. And um, like, like sometimes smart people can come across as mean, but um, but 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 pretty much all the speech therapists I've met are um, are like really smart, really um really um really they want you to improve and 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 the other thing is they almost always model really good speech so yeah so 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 like even if even if your even if your speech therapist doesn't know anything about cluttering and is, and is teaching a bunch of random stuff for me uh, for me I, I get inspired by random stuff thinking okay well how this doesn't seem like it fits, but how could I, um, how could I, how could I apply it? So, so I think now, um, so I was 27 when I got diagnosed and I went to therapy for about a year. So that means um, it's 2020 now. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry. I, I, um, I can't, I can't do math and make a YouTube video at the same time. Um, but, um, but but basically, I think now a lot more people know about. Uh, now I think a lot more people know about cluttering, and 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 especially I think cluttering is a lot more part of speech pathology um, mm -hmm. curriculums. But I think I think that probably a lot of um, probably probably speech therapists still don't know. Okay, cluttering. Uh, for someone with cluttering, these are the 20 things that we're going to try to, or uh, these are the 20 things that we need to have in therapy for someone with cluttering. So, so I think that's, um, I think that's still the same that I think, I think sometimes your speech therapist is just going to kind of wing it or like, like make their best, uh, make their best guess. But, um, but, but like I said, the, uh, their best guess is going to be way, way better than, uh, th than like, um, my mom's best guess, or my sister's best guess, or 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 that kind of thing, because they're because they're because um, they're professionals. So, so um, so so anyway, does does that answer your question? 
yeah like yeah like i just said you know like uh, as i began to really work with with slp i really began to you know like uh, look at their work in a broad you know you know like in a more uh, profound way because like before i knew like okay they work with uh, children with stuttering you know <laughs> they work like you know like in a very i feel like that job was really you know like very you know like small like in a way like uh, they only work with person with this type you know like person with like children and person with stroke so now i know like oh they have such a broad job and like uh, they essentially work with you know like our speech production so uh, even though like the uh, uh, slp like she has the expertise in uh, like how do you call anorexia like something you know she can help mm-hmm. us with uh, cluttering because uh, essentially the production is you know the same you know we use our diaphragm it's all about the same process you know so yeah even though like uh, they have a heart about cluttering then obviously they have some technique which will help us to really speak uh, you know very uh, eloquent way you know speak very um, fluently so because uh, uh, at the ground level uh, how we produce speech like how we think and all of those things uh, it's very common you know so yeah as you like said it's, it's really helpful and like uh, going to you know like uh, therapy myself i have really uh, broaden my view about what it is and the field so i'm yeah i'm grateful yeah in a way cool so so i think we should um i think we should wrap up um, um do you have any like last last things that you'd like to um talk about um well i think i have a question for you you know like as you have really you know like, improved a lot and also you have really worked with your speech for so long like what are the main few things which you uh, let's say suggest to people with cluttering you know because you have researched so much about it you have also been to therapist personally so what do you really suggest to person with cluttering or whatever <laughs> Where is- um, so that's um so that's a really good um that's a really good question um i think I think that, and, and, and my answer, uh, my answer is probably going to change. So like, like a year from now, you'll, um, a year from now, if you answer that question, I'll probably, um, I'll probably talk about something else, like, like whatever it is that I'm trying to learn at, at, at that point. But I think, I think probably being, um, uh, being aware, um, uh, being aware of speech is the biggest thing, like, um, uh, like the biggest, uh, or, or one of the things they taught me in therapy is about, about self-monitoring. And, and one of the things they said is that when you're first doing self-monitoring, don't try to correct yourself, like, um, which was kind of hard because they, because before that they said, um, before that, because I wasn't aware of my speech, they kind of pointed out, hey, you're messing up here, you're messing up here, you're messing up here, you're, you're messing up here, and now we're going to teach you about self-monitoring, but don't, don't try and correct any of the stuff that we just pointed out that you're, um, messing up on your on your speech so so anyway, so anyway that um, that was a little bit hard but the um but but the concept they said is don't um don't don't try and correct don't try and correct yourself yet um, um kind of like it and i look at it in, in, as levels in a video game if i if i started out with um if if i started out with like level level one self-monitoring and and then um, and then I read my self self monitoring level. Mm-hmm. I I shouldn't I shouldn't actually try to correct myself until or or, or and actually like when you're um, when you're self monitoring, I don't think you should really try and correct yourself. I think I, I think more the step is learn self monitoring as a, as a skill, and then um, and and then afterwards you can kind of, you, you can think through and say okay I did this I did this I did this. Um, how can I how can I do things to um, to improve and, and and to make a and to make kind of a cycle where you you self monitor reflect um, come up with um, come up with a strategy um, and then try and implement and then and then repeat and then repeat again so 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 I really like that because um, I really like that because because it's a really low pressure um, uh, a low pressure um, it a low pressure activity it doesn't make you feel bad because you're just like watching your speech go by and watching you repeat yourself over and over and over again and that kind of you know that kind of thing so like i have one thing you have to say you know like at the end so so like if somebody is dealing with a person who stutters then i recommend them not to you know like uh force somebody to speak slowly because it's like i had a very you know like not a bad but i had experience you know when uh, we had a group meeting in our college and my professor said to me oh please speak slowly and then it just made me so self-aware you know it's like 
I felt so self-conscious and I just, uh, my, my experience is just aggravated, you know. So it's like, uh, if you say some, like somebody with stuttering to speak slowly, like, like on the, you know, on the stage or something. And it's like saying to a person who is uh, sitting in a wheelchair to, you know, walk up, you know, and run. So it's like not really sensitive, you know. So it's like, obviously people with stuttering, they want to speak of it. Like, you know, they want to be hard, you know, they want to be understood. They want to be fluent because that's very human part of us. But I think, yeah, people like when dealing with, uh, you know, like cultures, like people cluttering, whatever, uh, I don't recommend people to, you know, like ask them to slow down, especially, you know, before a presentation or before, uh, let's say, a meeting, because obviously, like, they are very already self conscious and, like, they will obviously improve, you know, like in like a presentation because they are prepared, you know, like, it's not really a big problem to clutter, to be fluent in presentation because they have prepared, they know the outline. Uh, so it's like more of a problem while speaking spontaneously. So yeah, I will tell this to you not know, those people who are dealing with cutters or yeah. One thing is this, and I think yeah. Next thing. Yeah, and, and, um, and that's a uh, that's a really good point. Um, I'll I'll comment just a little bit and then let you um, let you give your yeah, uh, um, give um, give your second se second point. So so that's happened to me a few times too, where where people are trying to like help me and and I think. I think with the same thing with um, with slowing uh, with slowing down, but then uh, but then when they do that, it just so like like just totally disrupts me and puts me into this uh, like my worst speech ever uh, my worst speech ever mode. So so I totally uh, I totally understand that, and and I kind of think that I kind of think that speed is kind of it um, speed and like changing your speed. Uh, like, like one of the things they told me in speech therapy is people with um, th th that applies to me is pe people with cluttering um, tend to have a have a really hard time changing their pitch on demand. Mm, and, yeah. and I think um, I think kind of what you're saying is that people with cluttering um, also have a hard time varying the speed of their speech. Mm. And, and and I think that's. Um, I think that's the same way for me. Like, like I gave the example of speaking really, really fast and then speaking very slowly. And for me, for me, that like, like that that didn't come natural. Um, it's very uh, forceful, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and and, and actually, I can't. Um, I, I I probably need to practice speaking slowly more because it's just it it. it um, you're right. It doesn't it doesn't sound natural. And so and so even though I um, even though I Kind of feel like I have a skill of speaking slowly when I need to. Um, it's it's probably not like that great of a skill level. And 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 you make a good point that someone um, someone that doesn't know as much about cluttering as I do um, isn't even going to have as much of that skill as I as I do. And so it's um, so, so anyway, that's a that's a very very good point. So so anyway, I'm sorry on on your point number. Yeah. Two. So like uh, what I said before was uh, you know like people like for people who are dealing with clutters. So this is for people with cluttering. So it's like uh, many people who, like we have cluttering, uh, they don't know that they have a problem or like they have this condition. So it's like, uh, obviously like when you get conscious of something, you'll, you know, like uh, like in the first instance, or your reaction will be like to, you know, like be overwhelmed, you know, like to be a bit anxious, like to be, because obviously it's, a, it's not really uh, what you know or like, so it's like, I'm, I'm trying to say is that uh, it's very important to be self-conscious and obviously like when you get self-conscious that you have this condition then for some time your speech will be more you know bad because I had this experience because like before uh, you know like I was sitting in grade 12 or something I was not so conscious like self-conscious and as I you know like started to hear this so much from many people I started to be self-conscious it's like you know uh, we are like we are the uh, say our thought or like our identity is a reflection of somebody else's thought or you know like uh, it's like uh, we are what we think like others think we are so it's like very like uh, so in, in that way uh, our you know in the first instance our reaction will be like our tendency will be to really it will really be bad so so it's very important to not really uh, you know go into you know that uh, let's say into that space where you are uh, really having self-pity because I personally had that experience and which I have really overcome. So it's like, uh, for a while, you'll have some kind of like, you know, question of why me, like, you know, what is this? Or maybe you'll feel, you'll not accept it at all. So it's, it's very important to uh, not really go, you know, into that rabbit hole and just try to be like, you know, accept it. Okay, I have this condition. And yeah, like many people I can change and I can improve because 
it's like uh, let's say you know like let's keep the example of adam and eve you know like so when they got aware of a snake then you know like they become a human being like you know you know way metaphorically it's like when you become aware of that and you will start to have that self angst so don't really you know like dive deep into that feeling just try to accept it as it is and like try to take it in a light way not in a serious way because uh, okay you speak fast uh, because like my my tendency was like oh my gosh like i speak fast you know i, I will have this problem in my life i will be you know i i will not do anything in my life that's worthwhile i not really you know uh, because even like uh, i did not go to study a subject i liked because i felt like okay this will hamper my skill you know hamper my uh, career in this field so i i did not take that uh, you know career so which i regret now but i will obviously do that in a, in a future because i know it now so yeah i was just trying to say that you know in the first stage when you become aware don't have self pity so yeah, accept it as, as it is and you can improve obviously we can improve you know we can improve so that's the thing yeah and i think that's um i think that's really important and then especially um, especially for me when i was um especially for me when i was diagnosed and um like i went um, i went through that um, i went through that stage too and and i didn't have anyone like you to tell me what um like like kind of navigate me through all the difficult emotions yeah. with that so, so that's um, that um, that's really cool and that's a uh, that's uh, that's an an excellent point so, so I think we're, um, I think we're, I think we're out of time now. So yeah, um, I think it's very long now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, thanks, um, thanks very much for doing this, uh, doing this video with me. And it's been, it's been really cool. Thank you. Um, I think you had a really, a lot of really, really um, great stuff to say. So, so I really, I really appreciate it. I really Thank appreciate you very much it. as well. Thank you for so, having me. Thank you very much.